with that. Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I am here to welcome you to our latest Novage webinar episode. This week we have Point Cloud Processing with Vision Light Air. Explore new possibilities in Point Cloud Processing with Vision LiDAR and this new software solution helps you to quickly and easily browse manage point clouds containing billions of points. See how you can use point clouds to make virtual surveying, create surfaces, contour lines, and much more. Working with LiDAR data is now extremely easy. Today's presenter, Jonathan Duguay, is a Geomagic consultant at GeoPlus. He's been training end user and providing level two and level three technical support while helping research and development for new products. Uh, Mr. Duguay is a junior engineer of the OIQ and holds a Bachelor of Geomagic Engin Geomatics Engineering from Laval University. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novage. Novag is one of the largest online stores for design software and we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's needs. So put us to the test and visit our webpage at novag.com. For more daily software news and limited time promotions, uh, also pay a visit to the Novag blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter. Coming up next week, be ready for Revit. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live. So if you want to watch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now, without further ado, I'm going to um, pass the mic and the screen to Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan, take it away. We're very excited. Well, hi, everyone. Um Pretty excited also to uh, to show you our new product, Vision LiDAR, which came out uh, this fall, uh, well, last fall, uh, 2015. So uh, Vision LiDAR, as uh, Barbara said, is a, a, a software to work with LiDAR data, uh, either the terrestrial one, uh, aerial one, or mobiles. Uh, <clears throat> mainly what I'll do first is uh, I'll show you how to work with, uh, how we can work with the uh, point cloud files, uh, then I'll show you some of the classification aspects and uh, uh, viewing aspects, and finally I'll go on the virtual survey, uh, sur virtual surveying the tools that offers the software. So Vision LiDAR, uh, when it works with project, uh, it, help, it, <coughs> it uh, import points from uh, various uh, point cloud formats. Uh, what you need to, to, to do is just uh, name your project, set your project location, and uh, bring your source files. <clears throat> and yes, I said files, because uh, we can actually import more than one file and then uh, register them one to another. Many, uh, last file, many sort of files can be imported, either last E57 PDS file or CSV file, so the most common uh, format are imported in the, the software. <clears throat> and what we do is actually that we create a, a matrix uh, of these points, uh, of this point cloud, and uh, we reshape the files so that we have a much fluider uh, viewing <clears throat> of the project. So you can, the def default setting are uh, an average of 5,000 points per cube, but you could also set the size of the tile. Now, I won't, I won't be creating a new project from here because creating a new file from a low, uh, very large point clouds uh, might be a bit uh, long for this webinar, so I'll go on with the two different projects that I have over here. The first one is a house I have here. I'll show you with the intensity. Actually, this house was done with four different four different scan, terrestrial scans, as you see them in four different colors over here, which, if I check them by intensity, would come as this little house over here. And uh, originally, those, those points, those uh, four different stations were uh, not georeferenced at all. Uh, they were all at the, the zero, zero coordinates, so they come, came back at on one another 
at this point over here. And what I did is that actually I registered them with our tools over here. And what this tool does is that it takes one file in reference, let's say this uh, geo one over here, house non geo, and a second file, either one that has already been saved in the project or an external file. So I could import another file directly from this interface over here. And when I do sh the show over here, what it does is that it separates in two <coughs> different windows. So one window for my reference scan and the other window with the second scan. And as you see, there are already points picked in the project because it has already been registered. So for now, uh, what you need to do is pick a point in the reference point cloud, then pick a point in the to move point cloud. And once you have at least three coordinates, uh, three uh, junction points, well, you can then uh, verify your translation rotation uh, needed for the, the joining both, both scan together. And you'll have a difference between the two coordinates uh, at the end. So between these points over here at the end, I have uh, four, five millimeters uh, difference planimetrically and uh, nearly one centimeter uh, horizontal, uh, vertically, sorry. <clears throat> and thus I could put some more points if I want to uh, bonify this registration and uh, or but add some points or delete some points as I wish. There is no problem with that. And when it comes at the end, oops, sorry, when it comes at the end is that I have my different scans like these that are joined together, and I can verify them <coughs> with one another in different colors like that if I want, so I can uh, have a better judgment of my registration if it was rightly done or not. So if I verify my fence over here, it comes very quite well. Actually, the blue seems to have the uh, to to be offset, but uh, the points are came, came from the backyard, so it's normal that there's a bit of a gap over here. So that's one way to uh, that's the, the the way we register different files one to another is with control points like that that you pick on each uh, different files <clears throat> and from then you can set your project and this is a quite a small project over here so what I'll do is I'll go on a bit uh, a larger project over here which will be a cathedral uh, <clears throat> cathedral the St. George Cathedral here that is that was done with 15 different scans, and uh, as you, I hope you see, it's quite few, fluid to work with this file. And as we go in uh, near the, the the walls, we we see more definition coming up, and that's how we keep the the, the, the navigating through the point cloud so fluid, is that we uh, we have a level of detail depending of the the, 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 mat the matrix that I told you earlier. So <clears throat> it's quite easy to work with such point clouds. Uh, this is uh, uh, only 200 million points. I have bare point clouds. Unfortunately, they are classified, so I can't show you. Uh, but I can work with uh, uh, 8 billion points quite easily on this, this computer over here, which is a laptop, so just in reference. Uh, the, the, the software is quite powerful. I hope you see it as fluid as I see it. Uh, I know there are sometimes connections problem when uh, we do webinars, so I, <coughs> I hope we'll do greatly on that. Now, uh, you view it as an RGB file, uh, so it, it's look like, it looks like a photo, because as you might know, terrestrial uh, usually couple their point clouds with photos to add the RGB uh, information in the point. So we, uh, we, we keep it in Vision LiDAR also. We can see the files as intensity, which is quite great if you want to 
mark the the lines <coughs> on the on the roads and such. Uh, but we also have the the classification view and normal view. The classification view uh, is usually done with were usually done with uh, aerial lidar data, but uh, since the concept of classification is quite useful, uh, even on terrestrial ground, we, we actually build some algorithms to analyze your files and classify your files with different type of classification. So the ground classification to, uh, to uh, bring out your, your ground points uh, and classify them as such. Buildings, so as you see the blue points over here are building points. And uh, contrary of what uh, we're used to, to see in uh, aerial LiDAR, it's not only the roof, but instead we, we classify the walls as buildings. So mainly uh, what, what our vertical planes like structures are, are classified as building. Uh, this, this is quite useful also uh, if you want to classify vegetation and noise to help you uh, with your software, with, with your navigation. So if I wanted, I could only see well my, my buildings and vegetation like that, or else I could uncheck all and just see my ground data, which is quite useful if you want to do, if you want to do some uh, terrestrial uh, surfaces of your work and do uh, contour lines or, or such, <coughs> you can uh, verify that over here. Or if you want, you can also, well, actually see the buildings like that. And if I go on the parking lot over here, I can see my parking lot without the vegetation or with or without the vegetation like that, which is kind of useful if you want to see uh, your project in different angles. And as I said, we have some automatic classification that can be done. We're here for ground building, vegetation, and noise. We could also uh, manually classify some data if you want, if we wanted, uh, either classify or uh, delete some points in our uh, or, or point cloud. So what I can do is actually, <coughs> if I do a little fence around this car over here, I'll have some options that will come along with uh, this polygon that I've just made. Uh, these different uh, operations will be either to delete every point that are present within that uh, fence that I have did, or undelete them because we we keep the original file in mind, so the point is deleted, but partially. We always know that there was a point there, so it's always plausible to uh, to remake the, the re reput the points that we already deleted in a fence like that. We can also reclassify them or uh, create a surface from <coughs> from those point uh, the, the, from the points of this over here. That's strange. Okay, there was uh, uh, so I can delete, undelete, classify, extract the file as another part of uh, of the file um, as another point cloud directly, or create a surface from it. I, I'm, I'm sorry for delay. No. So if I go take the, I'll remake the manipulation. So. Mainly what I want to do is extract these points here <coughs> and I'll get rid of the auto, the, 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 the car, sorry for, sorry for that misspelling, uh, the car over here. So 
what I can do is extract the file as a part of the point cloud, and it will be an entirely new point cloud. So I can work with uh, this point cloud as I want. I can bring, as I said, the car over here. I could uh, classify it as uh, noise points or uh, anything else, or I could delete them entirely. And what it, once once it's done, uh, the main extraction, the main point cloud ain't affected yet. Uh, so we can have more than one scenarios like that. I could uh, could classify parts of it or uh, delete parts of it. And once I'm satisfied with one of these scenario, then I'll take that scenario back and set it set the extraction back. So once I do this, the car is entirely gone from my point cloud. Right here. So there's only the shadow left of uh, the points. <coughs> so we can work either, as I said, uh, we can analyze the the old the old sector. And we can also analyze uh, with this limited radius. So if you're working with a very large files and you uh, only want to do parts of it to accelerate your treatments, uh, you can limit your radius. Uh, there's a lot of options in the, the detections uh, uh, algorithms. So in Allies Ground Buildings, you can uh, settle uh, many different uh, aspects of these over here. <clears throat> and once you want to visualize it, you can either visualize it from the top, uh, the side of your projects, uh, from side, both sides over here. Or when once I'm on the top, well, I can, uh, I can see the project directly from the top, top view like that. So there are lots of different tools. Uh, there's also a magnifier. If I want to have more details over a particular, particular area or the edge and answer, the edge locator, which brings out the different edges of the projects, which helps when you want to pick points uh, and such. <coughs> so uh, that's mainly for the viewing and classification of as classification tools. Uh, now I'll go up in the virtual surveying. To do that, you need to actually select a descriptive file. Here, I'll just a, a descriptive file, which is a, a, a database. And in this database, <coughs> you can enter points, chains, line works, and set and alignments. Uh, directly from the point cloud. This particular database is the same used with other GeoPlus software, so it's quite the software. So it's quite easy to work with uh, one software or another from uh, GeoPlus. But it also offers you the possibility to export your uh, points. So I can show you the different points that I've already picked over here. So these points, these uh, line works are done directly uh, with uh, Vision LiDAR, and I can export them as CSV files or save them in the database. These are the points that have already been there. You can set a P code and a line number, so it's quite the same as if you were on the field uh, with a GPS or a total station and you were uh, making your survey. You can survey directly within the software. <clears throat> and to do that, you know, only need to go pick points like that. So if I want to, let's say, I'll just go with my fence over here, and I can bring out the pick point menu. And actually, if I want to do my fence over here, what I can do is open the edge detector, select one of the point, and set my line number go on another 
points like that and continue my fence uh, on and on. So it's quite easy to work with the with this over here, setting my peak old right, setting my line type right. So no, I'll just uh, delete those points. That I don't want them in my particular that over here. Uh, so I can pick point. I can pick. Uh, I can create alignments and work with alignments. And, uh, so if I open my alignment window over here, I can manage to have an alignment with an horizontal uh, uh, horizontal plane. We can add arcs, spirals, uh, symmetric spirals, and such within it. So I can draw it in 3D, and it will be a line over here, which we see better if I put it in intensity. So if I am I on the good one? I'll just draw it in 3D, and it's this one over here. And I can uh, thus uh, make calculations on that alignment to have an offset point, uh, the offset uh, of a point from that alignment, uh, the offset, this, the distance in the offset. Uh, I can create points uh, from that alignment over here if I want also to uh, to better view my file. So. There is a lot that can be done with the alignments over here. Uh, what we can do also is uh, one of our automatization that was done in the surveying is the uh, edge detector or the, the sidewalk detection. And what it does is that I want to memorize this little uh, sidewalk over here. I take the horizontal edge, pick my two points like that, and once I put the start button, it will generate my two points. Hard for that. Uh, so when, once I set the good parameters, it, it will create my uh, line work, uh, uh, my, my line work of the sidewalk like this automatically. And I've put uh, points at every uh, every two feet, about every two feet over here. So uh, and all of these can be uh, these parameters can be settled as well. <clears throat> Another useful tool is also to detect cylinder, which is quite a, kind of great if you want to have the center of a pilar, uh, pilar or a, a pole like this one over here. So once I take the detection, uh, cylinder detection over here, it's linked with the last, I'll just close these. And if I take my point over here, it will take, uh, it will give me in green the, the aspect of the cylinder over here, and there will be uh, blue points at the base of the cylinder, and that's the point that will be kept. So in the center of the pole, at the ground level, there will be a point created. It works with poles, but it also, uh, and it also <laughs> works I won't do it negatively. It's a great tool. Uh, it works also on trees. So uh, unless the tree is quite uh, strange, has quite strange aspect, it should create the si cylinder quite easily like that and put a, a point at the bottom of the tree at the ground level. So that, that's quite a good tool to uh, to identify. You don't need to pick three points on your poles and uh, then sell the the ground level of uh, your your survey is automatically done with that tool. 
Oh, that's another great use of the surveying tools. Another quite useful also is to uh, interrogate your point cloud. So to know if you want to to know exactly the size of that door. So if you want to know if a machinery uh, can can enter these these doors. So if you want to move out some some uh, some things like that, you can measure the side from side to side your door and have the exact measurement of uh, the door. Uh, you see the dis distance over here in meters because the scan was actually done in meters, but if it was done in, uh, in feet, so we, you didn't have the feet number, the, the feet measurement uh, directly. So that's just because I'm in Montreal and I'm not in the US currently and this point cloud actually comes from some, somewhere near here. So also, we have measurements for uh, distances and angles like that. So I can have the angle between three, three points over here. And both angles and distances, once I do my measurements, are, are here in 2Ds or 3Ds. I can have a report of those files. So it's quite easy to verify my measurements. Uh, it's quite a power. Uh, it's quite a useful tool for some interrogations like that. And these are not kept uh, within the software. It's, it's primarily uh, a one-use uh, measurement, so it doesn't overload your file or, or whatever. It's just it's just a measurement uh, done within the file directly. So that's one part. Uh, the other part of the surveying is, well, as you see, as you saw, we can <coughs> draw points, pick points, uh, create a survey, which will uh, be kind of like a GPS file as we export them in CSV. Uh, but what we can do also is open the civil module like that, and we can actually create some surfaces directly from these uh, from from the point, so what I've did, I've created a surface like this that I'll load, a surface done from the ground data that I've classified earlier. And from here, what I can do is I can actually create my contour lines directly in uh, Vision LiDAR to see, to analyze my, my data. And as you see over here, it's quite useful to verify if the road is okay, if you have some, some uh, strange behaviors in your surface. Uh, and since you can have more than one surfaces and one, more than one project, the same uh, database can be used on different projects. So if you want to have, let's say, point clouds every year and compare them from one another, well, you can easily calculate volumes from surface to surface. So if you want to, uh, if you want to scan an excavation pit uh, from uh, times to times and verify the volumes that was uh, that was uh, <coughs> shoveled, I'm not sure it's the right term, <laughs> shoveled out. Well, uh, you can easily uh, create volumes like these. You can even create because these are volumes uh, from. Uh, surface to surface in um, uh, the lonely triangle agent so it works well on uh, plain surfaces but if you have more complex surfaces uh, you'll uh, like uh, overhang you'll need to go with the solid kind of calculation which mesh the mesh the, the old surface and create volumes from that mesh and from the tetraization of that mesh so both kind of volumes are available within the software. We can also create profiles. Remember the alignment that I've shown earlier? Well, it's quite easy to view a profile of the ground on that alignment over here. So that's how this, the, the, the ground behave along this curve over here. We can do profiles. We can also do cross sections, so it's quite easy uh, to to view these sections from 
one another. So like that. So I have the the behavior of my surface along that alignment that I had over here. So that's another way to verify all these. Uh, <coughs> we can also, in the, the LiDAR, uh, there's a LiDAR, uh, aerial LiDAR module in mobile, li mobile LiDAR module. The aerial model, mo mobile, sorry, <laughs> the aerial module uh, you actually brings out some uh, simplification algorithms to help you create surfaces uh, with your point clouds. Actually, there are two kinds of simplification. One that is done with a grid, uh, and you have to keep in mind that usually the software that creates surfaces from uh, LiDAR and LiDAR point clouds usually only work with uh, identification. And that's a major problem because you don't have controls on the points that you keep and the points that you let go. Uh, if it does fire from uh, uh, one point to 10% uh, of the, mod, the, the the surface, it actually uh, only keep one point out, out of 10 and doesn't disregard, doesn't uh, check if the point is a good point, a point that you want to keep. So our strategies in simplification are much more complex than that. Uh, we actually analyze a grid and verify the tolerance within that grid to, uh, to verify if the points can or cannot be uh, deleted from the surface if they are relevant or not. So that's one of the, the simplification and the other simplification is a triangulation simplification which analyzes triangles by triangles and verify the slope within each of these, uh, these tri triangles in the surface to verify if the variation is high enough or not. So these, both, both of these simplification will help you a lot to work with surfaces that are much more easy to export in other software and uh, then can be worked with uh, quite easily. Uh, else, if you bring a surface with a billion points within other softwares, you might uh, have a big headache. So <laughs> that's one of, the, one of the good uses of the simplification over here. The other uh, module, the, the, the mobile, you should see mobile over here. Uh, that was corrected in uh, the, the recent version. Uh, this actually analyzes the center line with the painted uh, sort of the, the painted line of a road to extract the alignment directly from the point cloud. Uh, but you need to have a particular kind of file, but that can be done and that can uh, create alignments <coughs> like this one over here. Uh, alignments that are uh, over 10, this is uh, 2,000 points uh, that I've simplified in actually 12 uh, different segments. <coughs> and these can be fit to have a best horizontal curve. So I have a curve like that that I can actually <coughs> best fit. And once it's it will uh, recreate the horizontal curve. I can even set to have arcs within uh, be between each line, so it will actually create arcs directly in the alignments that will, uh, so that every line will be tangent one another. This can be done for the horizontal curve and, of course, the vertical cur curve as well. So with parabolas with between the lines, if I make my fit over here. This vertical fit, and I'll have some parabolas to, to join every lines within my alignment. So, uh, quite useful tool if you're working with alignments uh, with uh, with LiDAR to uh, to to create alignments. <clears throat> and if you want to to see how the solid kind of work, I have some uh, I have a little hand over here that's quite that that shows the the possibilities of quite a, of this kind of mesh so so 
So I have a hand like that over here. So, and if I had put that in a standard uh, volume calculation, it would have been very difficult to, if I had put that, it would have been very difficult to analyze and create volumes from uh, standard tools. So what we need to do is create mesh as you see, and the characterization of these, so when I calculate the volume, it will calculate the volume of the, the whole uh, solid, uh, the solid as a whole. So that's mainly uh, the different process that can be done over here. Um, <clears throat> so I've seen, well, and also, nah, I didn't uh, spoke of it, but when once you create volumes, uh, you can also create uh, differential contours to know where exactly are the um, <clears throat> the difference between your two surfaces. I'm going one way. Uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't last you <laughs> on that one. But as I said earlier, one when you want to create uh, volumes between two surfaces, uh, it's quite easy with the software. And once this is done, if you want to know uh, the part that was excavated in your pit, well, if you make some differential contours, you'll see exactly where telemetrically, uh, where the, the, the data had been cut off, the, 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 the herd has been cut off, because it will show a big difference between both surfaces, while the, the surfaces, the, the, the place that doesn't change will, won't have any uh, contours over them. So that's a good way to analyze your your data. <clears throat> and once this is done, as you saw earlier with the different uh, chains, different uh, line uh, line works that I've done. If I show back my if I show back my points like that, you have all the survey that I did. Well, actually, I can bring them in. Uh, in another CAD with Vision Civil, uh, which uh, which can work with the same file as I said earlier. So that's another tool that we can use. <coughs> uh, another software that, that, that Joe Plus offers that can uh, link both both uh, both informations one another. Well, extract the information from Vial, uh, Vision LiDAR and then uh, draw that in your favorite CAD. Now I'm opening AutoCAD, but I could have opened MicroStation, uh, BricsCAD, or uh, PowerDraft. Th these are all different tools that work with Vision Civil. And from there, you'll be able to, uh, to, to draw your line works directly, work with your point. Uh, it has a Kogo in, uh, installed in the software, so it's a quite useful tool. I should have opened it earlier because I didn't expect AutoCAD to be so slow to to create. And since I'm using different uh, codes, B codes over here, uh, in Vision LiDAR I see them in uh, the same color, but if I <coughs> if I draw them in AutoCAD, the Vision Civil has uh, information about these B codes to uh, to draw in the right uh, right color right layers uh, and all the points can have their symbols associated with the picos which <coughs> makes you draw your survey quite easily in the software and actually with the norms that you've created so that's the same result as this over here. If I look at, at the top, top view over here, I have exactly the same drawing like that. So I've managed to uh, to make, uh, Barbara, I, I pretty much talk about everything I wanted to, to show you uh, with this webinar. Uh, is there any questions? That, Yes, yes. So we have a quite. Uh, we have first of all great feedback. Everybody's really impressed, and um, we have a question. So, Vision Lidar records color information as well, or the point yeah, data well, is overlaid with photography. Actually, 
the 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 point the, the the color of these points come from the point cloud uh, that was imported. So uh, in the last file or E57 files, uh, if the 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 scan was uh, matched with a photographic uh, kind of uh, well usually done with the the scanner itself that has a built-in uh, camera or something, we we keep that information in the software so we can reuse that that information but we can't color the points uh, like this what we can color though is the classification so as you as you saw earlier like that this classification here can be colored as you wish you can change the color of the ground if you want to have something more grayish like that cool uh, that that can be done within the software Oh, cool. So, can this be used to fluidly render render surfaces, uh, or or not? Well, actually, not uh, not yet, because uh, uh, you can see the surface. Uh, you can see the surfaces. You can see the points, but you can't associ associate the points that you see here with uh, current surface. Uh, not yet, though. Okay, I like uh, that. Not yet is a good answer. <laughs> there's room for improvement. That's great. Oh, there, there's always room for improvement. <laughs> we we work uh, we work a lot with our our customers to develop tools that they they need and they want. So uh, uh, we're always open for new developments uh, over here. Uh, we work uh, closely with uh, some of our customers over here that are quite impressed with the developments that we can uh, we can come over with. So uh, yeah, there's always room for that. Great. So that was it. That was our only question and um, um, that is great, great news. So um, I'll take the screen back. So I want to show everybody where um, you can go to get Vision Light there. So I want to thank everybody for attending the webinar. And I also, here it is um, on our web page, sorry, um, where you can get Vision Light there. Um, you see what he can do. So I was very impressed. It seemed a lot of fun and a um, lot of potentials. Um, it's great. So come visit Novage at Novage.com because Novage is the best way to buy design software online. And um, also for information on specials, we'll always have specials and new releases. Uh, join the Novage Network on Facebook, Google Plus, or uh, subscribe to the Novage blog. And don't forget the next week webinar is about V-Ray for Revit. And to watch today's webinar or previous one, check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels. Um, our webinar playlist really has webinars for every software taste. Thanks again for joining us today and thank you so much Jonathan. Um, this was very entertaining and I hope it inspires uh, many of, you, of our attendees. Well I hope so also. Thank you so much and um, have a great day everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you now. Goodbye. <laughs>